compared to a legacy company you guys have data of users because that's how your business is built but if i have to put ai into it to what extent have you been able to use it have you been actually able to use it is it more than generative ai uh, what are the use cases that we have seen we'll start with you hi everybody i'm akshay i'm part of a company called fitpass um thank you very much for having me here um we had launched our ai coaching tool in 2018 and at that time nobody spoke of ai the way they speak now like today uh, recently i saw an ad on tv about a paint company saying that they have ai in the paint now so i think ai ai right now is a very very common place word with maybe people are not using with the depth that that word should carry or the gravity it should carry um are we able to use it correctly i think we're maybe at the surface of what we can potentially use it for um and there are lots of limitations one is also how much our engineering side of the world understands it right now uh, so obviously applications theoretically are immense what are we able to use it as so why we launched the ai coaching tool was um because we're a fitness focused company your body only moves in 130 different ways your neck can only rotate it can go up and down go left and right your limbs can only do certain movements So your limbs can only move in 130 different ways. How you combine those movements is how you design circuits or workout programs that work for you. This the AI can design faster for you than a human. So that is where our first application of AI came in 2018, where we said we'll start personalizing these combinations with finite pool of workouts which you have to combine. Today how do we use it? I think today it's it's it, I don't I can't even explain it today it's permeated every aspect of our business. whether it is acquiring the customer retaining the customer understanding the customer and where we are trying to use big data and ai is to predict health outcomes so today uh, in 2020 we had worked with the government of india from 2017 to change insurance regulation so uh, before that insurance regulation insurance was a product that was sold by fear and um, through Uh, it was very it was a push product where people didn't want to buy it but people were selling it and penetration was an increasing there were many issues and we basically told the government that either you accept it as a hospitalization reimbursement policy don't say it's health because you don't care about how healthy i become or not but when you speak of financial wellness you want that i have 100 rupees in my pocket it becomes 150 right you don't wait for me to go bankrupt but in health insurance you want me to first lose my health and then you hope that i come out of hospital that's it and that your story ends so we got fitness included Now, how does that impact your health outcome? Today, health is being priced at a basis your age, but is a Bharat Natyam dancer who's fifty equivalent to a twenty-seven year old who's sedentary? Is an ex um, NDA officer or a vet or an army officer who's retired short-term service at forty-five is he unhealthier than a thirty-year-old who's been sitting for last ten years as he's been working? That is not being priced adequately. So that is where I think AI will create a huge difference in the next two three years. Once all that data is collected, once the data comes, then we'll be able to do it. So, are we using it fully? No. Are we using it in every aspect that we possibly can? Yes. How secure is the Indian consumer with so many data available at so many touch point? And we had a very interesting discussion in the morning. Somebody said that I don't use Digi Yatra. Uh, I am a crazy person when it comes to my photos being clicked and put up on LinkedIn and social, and my editor has a point of view on that. <laughs> so you will not find a picture of mine. Yeah. So how do we safeguard our privacy when you all have our data? We also have to understand how much of our data is insecure. So we just started two lines of business. So we opened subsidiaries. So the moment it got registered on ROC, immediately before we got the certificate of incorporation, we started getting calls from. various banks said please open your account here so this was the government the ministry of corporate affairs gave that data and it was nobody else had that data that my company has been incorporated we did not know we have not received the certificate of incorporation pan card bhi nahi aaya abhi to but uske pehle the bankers have my information so obviously i think because a lot of businesses and governments have priorities of digital inclusion or banking um, uh, digitalization of banking is a priority for the government so the mca is encouraging everyone to reach out and open your bank account so you might think that this is now a breaching into my uh, data or my security but there are so many business priorities a lot of people sell leads right a lot of people will gather information automobile companies will do this right everybody who has a bmw or a mercedes you can get that data off anywhere so we have to understand what level of data is getting insecure and why it i do not think it is happening without intention 
it is not that hackers are breaching into this people are willingly selling your data so to amit's point it is only when we enforce that my data is not to be sold my cookies are not to be tracked only then we will actually achieve the security we want right now only your numbers are getting leaked because people are intentionally selling it how easy it is to get the data out of the gen z's because they're all over the internet how easy it is to get gen z to give data i think it is more complicated to get the boomers to give data because boomers really need to be incentivized to give data which i'm mean, just talking about the 100 rupees thing gen z is, i think works on the principle of consent if they feel the product or whatever service is of value to them they will give you data they are definitely more sensitive about data they understand they, they maybe they're more transactional in data they want to give you only that much which they feel will help them get something back in return which is information or a better service so it is actually easier to to work with gen z for this perspective obviously they're more demanding but i think it is the boomers where data so when we work for fitness so we serve an age group of 16 to 82 and the 82 year olds are largely ex army people who continue to stay active or continue to play golf etc and to get them to share any information is very tough but to get a 19 year old 20 year old 21 year old to link their integration give me their heart rate give me their steps give me their calorie intake everything will come so obviously the intervention is high so as long as they feel there is value in data they will give it